All right, well, welcome Facebook Live audience. Uh, my name is Jeff McLaughlin, and I'm with Pastor David here on a Thursday afternoon coming before you just to talk about some cool stuff. And today we're going to talk about marriage, ah. which is the area of uh, work <laughs> that I do here at the church. And so um, and I get to kind of hijack the conversation a bit uh, today. But we're going to talk specifically about the importance of dating and uh, pursuit after the wedding. Okay. You now, is that important for starters? That's the, we'll just start yeah, there. <laughs> but if we're about marriage, we need our wives. Oh, my right? goodness. Well, I figured they can heckle on Facebook Live <laughs> yeah. or whatever. That's the deal. So this seems to be an area that many couples, in my experience, overlook in, in their marriage. Yeah. So the, a lot of times for a, a young couple, the goal ends up being the wedding day. They wouldn't say it that way, but mm -hmm. their actions kind of prove it that way. And then yep. life hits and they sort of, you know, kids come along, whatever. Um, so, uh, just having fun together, turning off phones and having, uh, going for a walk, going for a night out, going mm -hmm. for a weekend, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, uh, we don't see a whole lot of that happening yeah. and it's having a detrimental effect on a uh, marriage. So I thought, um, maybe I'd start with you and just say, how do you and Rachel keep that sort of discipline in your own marriage? And what has the benefit been yeah. from you? Or you know, you? It, it, it's funny, Jeff, a marriage starts off very close together. Mm -hmm. And over time, it, it gets further and further apart. It's like if you start at home plate with the World Series going on right now, let's, yeah, use, let's yeah. use baseball. You yeah. start at home plate, one of you is running down third base, one of you is running down first base, and you, and you get further and further apart. Mm. The place where you're probably the furthest apart is when you got kids, mm. and they're at the age that they're involved in a lot of stuff, and sure. so you are you know got a taxi service going, <laughs> and, and you're trying to be everywhere. And then as the kids grow and, and move out, and you begin to try to come back. Yeah. The problem is, is that during that drift apart, things happen. And I've seen a lot of marriages never turn back. Yeah. And I don't think it has to be that way even yeah. with all of that going yeah. on. So how do you stop it? What you're talking about, pursuit, yeah. dating. Yeah. You know, Rachel and I, we, we, I try my best to guard Fridays. Um, for her and for me and for whatever. And then we, I'm not really good at it, but I try to get her out of town and go away as much as I can because I've always believed it's in moments like that you remember why you married each other. Mm. You remember mm. some of those things that made you fall in love in the first place. Absolutely. So you kind of get out from the stress and yeah. the pressure. Yeah. So I think it's incredibly important to date. Now that yeah. date may... You know, let's not talk about expensive dates because sure. yeah. you don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money. Go to the park. Mm. <laughs> Rachel's always want me to just go to the park and eat lunch. Mm. You know, she said, hey, I'll stop Chick-fil-A, grab something. Let's just go sit at the park. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's not exactly my idea of, of, of lunch. But you know what? We've done it. And the reason is because it just gives you time to sit Absolutely. in a beautiful spot, have lunch together. So it's just little things, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Just little things to keep the dating and the pursuit and just the relationship alive. It's funny you say the, the lack of cost or to keep the cost down, and that's okay because um, as a church, we've been doing these date night guides mm -hmm. quarterly for a couple of years now. And I remember the first one that we did, and we provided free childcare at that point because it was new. We were just exploring mm -hmm. the concept. and. First of all, for the parents out there who have young kids, I got five. Free childcare? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. That's, that's a big check right that, there. That's, yeah, it's like God's anointing right there because of the average babysitter these days, I think, thinks they're worth a whole lot more than they're worth. But yeah. no offense to our babysitting crowd out there. I don't want to offend anybody, especially those who may be watching that babysit my kids who are going to ask for a pay raise. But that first date night guide that we did, we had couples that actually canceled their free childcare. And they told us why. They said, well, we just don't have money to go out at this point. And I got to think about it. This is November, by the way. It's several years, mm -hmm. four years ago. And I said, man, we've got a hundred and something acre campus here. Your kids are in childcare three hours, I think, free. With, and not at me paid professional childcare. Yeah. There's McDonald's across the street. I'm not, I'm not endorsing McDonald's. We're not <laughs> yeah. endorsing McDonald's, uh, but go on. get an ice cream, right? Yeah. You know, like go yeah. throw a blanket down on the ground. And I think it yeah. taught us that, that the average couple thinks of a date as being yeah. big. Yeah. Right? It's and and Jeff, that's a, that's a great point because mm -hmm. the danger of going somewhere nice or whatever is that you don't really spend time talking to one another and yeah. whatever. You're, yeah. you're distracted. You're watching a movie together or whatever. That's right. Those are good. That's a good time. But I'm telling you, yeah. there's no substitute for having a conversation yeah. and yeah. for just being together. Totally. So what's, yeah. what's the, the best date memory? Um, and, and maybe if I can point it a little bit more that maybe you spent the, the least amount of money with Rachel on. Like maybe it was a time early on in marriage where there, there wasn't a whole lot of extra or whatever and you just had to get creative. 
Do you have a, a sweet memory? Or? Yeah. You know what we used to do? Tell me. There's two things we used to do. We love doing these things. Um, we would go play tennis. Okay. And we'd just go to a public court yeah. somewhere that wasn't being used. We loved that. In fact, we got where we play doubles with other couples. Oh, that's cool. That was really fun. And yeah. But the other thing is, believe it or not, <clears throat> I've always loved to uh, throw a football and catch football. I mean, I just yeah. love throwing mm -hmm. football back and forth. And she got to do that. I mean, started doing that. And really, is, she's got a great arm. And we would go down to, like, just a field. There was an old practice field. Yeah. And we were married, lived in a trailer. <laughs> And we didn't have money to go eat or do anything. And yeah. so we just go down, go to that field, and we just hang out together and throw the football back and forth, extra, you know, a little exercise awesome. involved. Awesome. And, you know, Jeff, it was great. I, we were talking about it the yeah. other day, how much those times meant to us. Even yeah. though we didn't have anything, yeah. we had each other. Yeah. And that, may, that means a whole lot. That's awesome. And, yeah, i, I got to share with you a funny story. Maybe this will speak to somebody out there. The... Um, the day before working here, I was a youth pastor for many years, and in writing some of these date guides, I sent out questionnaires to just former students that had now gotten married and everything. A lot of them have grown up and even have kids. And I remember asking that question, what's the, the most fun you've ever had on a date? Same idea, that like, you didn't spend a whole lot of money on. And I had a student that said to me, when my husband and I got married, you know, obviously grown up, they're not a student anymore. Um, they had so little money that they would plan dates by making a picnic basket using whatever they could find in their fridge. <laughs> and she said to me, she's like, you know what, there were times we had ketchup bottles in there and we had like Parmesan cheese and a stick of butter and some pickles or whatever, And oh, but goodness. it's what we remember the yeah. most. Now that, you know, in this particular case that I'm thinking of, they, they, they're they doing better. They can afford to go out and yeah. have a nice date and everything, but it was still the, yeah. the have not moment. You, you know, know, Jeff, it's, crazy? It, for me, finding things you enjoy doing together, Yeah. sometimes yeah. we forget that. Totally. We, we, we kind of get off in our own little world and area. Yeah. Um, Rachel, <laughs> she started loving to fish, go fishing with me. Huh. And so we were out one day, and and I said, do you really like to fish? I mean, because she'll go in almost any time. Hmm. I said, do you really like to fish? And I never will forget her answer. She goes, no, not nearly as much as I like being with you. Oh. And I'm telling you. That's I, a Hallmark card right there. Yeah. And... <laughs> I, I've never forgotten it, but she loves awesome. to go because we're together. Totally. And so I think you just need to find things you enjoy right. doing together. Right. Whether you call that a date or not, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just think it's awesome to have things that you can enjoy and spending time together. It's not about what you're doing, right, who you're with. Yep. So here's a question for you. What have you, uh, in your experience as a, as a pastor and a counselor, um, have you seen the negative correlation when couples don't do this? Oh, yeah. And how would you speak to that? You what, know, what encouragement might you offer? i tell you, from where I am, of course, our, we're an empty nest uh, family, mm -hmm. home, uh, and it's mainly because we won't let them come back. <laughs> no, they're, they're free to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua, you're free to come back, yeah. <laughs> um, we, we have known couples at our age hmm. that when the kids left, it's like they didn't know what to do. Mm. They didn't know each other. Mm. And it was like starting all over for them. So I've seen the danger on that end, that, that when the kids are gone or when the activities slow down, what do you have left? Mm. Mm. And for a lot of families, not much. So what do you say to the young couple now that has the potential to not go down that road? They can do something about that yeah. now. And maybe they don't see it. Yeah. What do the, you say to that couple now? I think you build, You marriage is a lifelong building process. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, you know, as, as you've heard me, I've come into your, uh, uh, to your classes, whether it was the re-engage or it was uh, prep. prep marriage, yeah. I, marriage is like a sports car. I mean, let's say you want a, a Porsche or Lamborghini or whatever, sure. Corvette. It, you can have it because God gives you that when you get married. The only problem is you got to put it together. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen couples that didn't put it together. And so guess what? When it got time to really enjoy the sports car, nothing they there. didn't have tires, wheels, <laughs> nothing was together. Yeah. And, so they, and so I say to couples, remember, you're building, and you're building not just to get your kids out of the house. You're, you're building to enjoy those children and, and to do things now that will kind of add to that foundation. Because when those kids come back, they need to come back and see, wow, they still love each other. Absolutely. They still love it. it Absolutely. It's, 
we didn't come back to a shell of a marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a lesson lifelong yeah. for your kids. Yeah. So um, one of the ways for, for us having all the kids that we have and everything, we're not always able to get out. We've, we've done the date in concept where mm -hmm. we'll, you know, the younger ones are easier to put to, to bed early and everything, but our two oldest are eight and 10. And so we've given them a certain latitude that they can stay up a little bit later, but they got to stay in the room that mommy and daddy are going to cook dinner and it's our time mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, that's one of the creative ways that we've solved maybe the childcare issue because it's, it can be expensive and everything. Um, how did you and Rachel ever solve it? Did you ever run into that? Did you ever run into situations where you couldn't go out because of money, childcare, whatever, when the kids were in your life mm. and you had to solve it in other ways? Or what, yeah. what could you offer on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, one of our favorite things still to this day, even though the kids aren't there, yeah. uh, Rachel, nine times out of ten, she'd rather stay home and watch a movie okay. than to go out and have a meal yeah, and yeah. go to the movies. Yeah. Yeah. No, she said, yeah. I'd rather be right here. Mm. And I... I think you have to, and I think it's pretty cool what you guys do. I, I think you just have to create the moment even with the kids there. And yeah. it might be that they're already in bed or they go to bed early or whatever, and you're yeah. able to find that time after it. Yeah. Um, or there might be another creative way to, to figure it out. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, you got five. You only have three. <laughs> yeah, You know what's causing that, right? I mean, you, yeah. you realize what's happening there. I, I never took biology, so, uh, <laughs> you know, not in college. <laughs> no, and that's, it's. Uh, I think for us, we love even those moments, even if we don't have to do those moments, because our kids get to see it. Yeah. They know what happens there, that's and right. it's modeling something for them, so I think that's huge. So let's switch gears for a second here, because we've got this Date Night Live event coming up, and this is an event that's a week from Friday. Um, we're going to put the registration links and all that stuff, I think, in the body of this post uh, for Facebook Live. But this is a live comedy event using our in-house talent, which is, that's what's favorite of mine. Like, when yeah. we use our people, because we know them, mm -hmm. they're funny, we love them. They are very funny. They're very funny. Um, irreverent, like, I may not have a job after this event, <laughs> yeah. because they may go and cross the line, even though that's I try fair. and pull them back in. But, you know, um, but no, they're, good. they're a great cast, and, and we're using the Saturday Night Live model. Same idea, same monologues mm -hmm. and skits and, and everything like that. Um, so we want our couples to register for that. But one of the reasons that we did this format was because there is a, uh, that I see, and maybe you can speak to this or speak against this, but I see a lot of husbands that don't believe that they can have fun at a church marriage event. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And a lot of them, I think for in my experience, it's been because they've gone to one before and they got beat up. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Can you speak to that at all and speak yeah. to why it's important to teach our couples that it's okay to have fun at a church marriage event? Well, first of all, let me say, beyond having a format similar to Saturday Night Live, there are no other similarities to Saturday Night Live. I just want to make sure you understand there is nothing else that... Is... We didn't give you your script that you're playing the president? No, you're not doing no, 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 no. We're not going okay. there. Um, <laughs> the funny, the, the best times I've had, Jeff, mm -hmm. I mean, really, when you're able to come to church and laugh, yeah. it changes yeah. so much yeah. about what you experience here on, the, on this campus. Yeah. And yes, there are a lot of guys and a lot of people that think, well, no, you can't go laugh. You know, I just disagree. I think it ought to be the first place you can laugh hmm. because of the safety. Uh, because you're in a place that, you know, my goodness, God has given us incredible joy, yeah. life that is abundant. I mean, all the things the scripture talks about, the joy of the Lord is hmm. our strength. So this ought to be the first place yeah. you can laugh. Absolutely. And, and especially when you consider, when you take a look at who we are. I mean, I think God laughed. I think he has a great sense of humor. <laughs> There's several places in the Bible. I know he's, he's smiling Absolutely. and laughs. I just, I just think it's for couples, they underestimate what could happen. Mm. Okay, they think it's another cheesy church event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've seen more church kind of things been, the, the problem has been they were just so cheesy. They were so bad yeah, yeah. that you're like embarrassed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I know who you got coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're incredible. And they're not a secret. They're on our, yeah. our video promo. So yeah. Alyssa Vasquez is one of them. She you, is. Too funny. Right. She too funny. is, man. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun with her. But her. another guy that I'm excited about her. is a guy named Isaac Knox. That um, He is part of an act that is actually down at Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. And they're the improv guys down by the food trucks. Oh, and they do yeah. a Wednesday through Friday show. And I think they're actually at Universal as well. They work both parks. Um, but do all kinds of comedy improv, and they're those quick-witted guys that can make you give them a keyword and then they rap yeah, to it. Yeah. I mean, stuff that yeah. my brain just doesn't think like that. But they're they're gonna have a lot of fun with our 
our crowd. And so what I love is that we are, we are going to deliver on what we've promised to deliver, and that is a fun night for couples, not a bait and switch. Yep. Okay, not where they yep. come, and it's like, all right, now we got you here in the seat. Now sit down, husbands. We're going to tell you what's wrong with you and everything. Mm-hmm. We're not here to do that. I feel like it's our responsibility to yeah. encourage them as well and to say we're, we're with them, and we got them. That's so how good. would you speak yeah. to that? Yeah, that's so good because yeah. you know bait and switch happens all the time. All the and, time. And we're, we're pretty good at beating up on people. <laughs> When they come, just yeah. guilting them into stuff. And yeah. That's not what that's yeah. about. It's yeah. not what we're about. Yeah. And um, I just think it's going to be a great event to, yeah. to relax and enjoy. Yeah, well, we're on record now, so we can't go back on that <laughs> promise that you can hold it against us. Uh, let me see if there's one more. I wrote down a few questions here. Uh, how about this? How about the funniest date story ever uh, for you and Rachel? Uh, oh, is there... it's, it's one I cannot tell. <laughs> I cannot share on this. Okay, is there one I that can... you can share on this? Oh. Um, <laughs> Um, well, let me just say, I, I can give you most of the details okay. of the funniest one. Rachel will die when she <laughs> knows I'm doing this. Rachel, I'm sorry. She's advance. traveling. I, she's <laughs> traveling today, so maybe she's not watching right now. The, you know, there's women texting her right now, like, get on I know, Facebook. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so I'm going to give you some of the <laughs> components of it. Use your imagination. <laughs> one night. My dad comes to see me. I'm in college. We're dating. Yeah. Rachel and I are dating. Yeah. We have a date the next night. It's Valentine's Day. Okay. And we're going with another couple to another town. And I think we were going to, uh, uh, he was going to do something at a, a banquet. But we were just going with him. And we we're going to go have a little time together. So my dad comes to see me the night before. And he, I don't know why he had a box of raisins. And so while I was talking to him, I'm just eating raisins like there's popcorn. You know, I'm I'm not even paying attention. And before I realized it, I've eaten the whole box of raisins. (laughs) And so the next night, we're in the car. We're on the way. It's pouring down rain. It's cold. We're dressed. I've got a suit on. Rachel's got a nice dress. And all of a sudden, it hit me. Now, you would think... I would be resourceful and figure out a way to deal with this without embarrassing. I stopped at somebody's house. And you're not going to believe all the things that happened once I got in that house. I'm going to leave it there, the imagination. Go. Somebody who, random person? Yes, I know who they were. Just some house out in the... I just walked up and said, hey, I have a really big favor to ask you. So I get back in the car and Rachel goes, what happened? And I said, you're not going to believe it. So I told her. To this day, if you ask her what's the craziest things ever happened to us on a date, she'll say the raisin story. That's the, exactly what. Do you happened. have any idea how many like canisters of raisins are now going to be coming into your office? Listen, I get them all the time. <laughs> I get them all the time. I'm just, it's just a story. Like and you should have said it was ice cream or something. Oh like no, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't have the same effect. <laughs> well, that's but true. But you know what? I, there, and there's parts of the story. I guess someday I'll share. You know. Oh but, my goodness, man, it was horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you, imagine the worst you could think. Yeah. It was worse. I, I, I can't imagine, and Who she stayed with you. And she did. I mean, we weren't, I don't think so we That's were love, engaged. my friend. That is love right I don't there. think we were engaged. I think we were still just dating at that point. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, maybe we were. I don't remember if we, no, we were. We had just gotten engaged. So I just wanted to back out. So who yeah. has told the story more over the years? Has that been you? Oh, it's been it? me. She won't tell it. <laughs> she won't tell it. No, she's okay, like, I can't believe he's, <laughs> he's going to say that. Well, that's, hey, listen, I appreciate you just bearing your soul on that one, and I, uh, you know, the thing is, is every one of us has a story like oh, that, yeah. and it's it's fun to be able to laugh about that and talk about that. I think it's cool because, in a weird way, it bonds you together even more. I mean, you do life like that. You got your raisin stories and whatever. I mean, you know, that's among the the, the moments of sorrow and also the moments of great joy. Yeah. I think it's all that. So you know what? If you can't live life. together yeah. in the rawness of life and just the, the, the real stuff, I mean, Jeff, you know, we kind of portray marriage as this romantic movie like you see in Hollywood. Yeah. We know it's not, and everybody knows it's not. But what's so cool is to know that in the reality, I mean, in what marriage is really all about, that's when it's its best. Hmm. Sure, I mean, anybody can get along and have a great time if it's all romance. Yeah. If every night it's candles, every night it's a, a dinner, yeah, I mean, yeah. But man, when you're sitting there over oatmeal or a hot dog, Rachel and I used to come home for lunch, and the only money we had was to buy hot dogs, and we'd boil the hot dogs, and we'd sit and have lunch together and eat a hot dog and then go back to work. Yeah. And you know what? 
we remember those times, those were incredible times. Absolutely. It's funny you say that, and I think this is a good place to end up. Um, years ago, we watched just for sati literally for satirical purposes. This is not me confessing to my pastor here. One of the episodes, the finale episodes of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, I can't mm -hmm. remember which one it was. And in those episodes, they replay the whole season and they show you all the events and stuff. And there's, you know, obviously some very inappropriate things that can happen there too. But just even the dates that the, the guys would go, I think it was, a, I think it was the Bachelor. So he was meeting all the women, all the different women, and um, you know, helicopters flying in, picking them up and taking them to like some luau in the Hawaiian Islands or wherever the scene was. And it's it's funny to me because then real life hits, and a lot of times these guys come back and it doesn't take months before they've already broken up and it's, it's no longer real anymore. And yet yeah. I suspect that there are many people out there that watch a show like that and they see the final rose given or whatever and they say, well, that's true love. That's, mm -hmm. that's you know, if I can use the word sexy, that's, you know, and I think the hot dog stories and the raisin stories are more of that than the other because there's true bonding that happens there. It's yeah. real love. It and, is. And uh, I love seeing the contrast between the two of those, so. And you know what happens yeah. to you, Jeff, when you're in those moments? Yeah and all you've believed is this fictional account or this fantasy marriage, you end up sitting there going, man, I'm missing out on so much. Yeah. And, and, and you think you are. You think this is not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And the truth of it is that, no, what you think it's supposed to be is a fantasy. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. doesn't even exist. Yeah. But what's awesome is when you can find joy yeah. in the simple things. Yeah in the day-to-day -day things, in, in the things that are just life. Hmm. That's when you know you got a great marriage. Absolutely. That's a good yep. word. Well, man, thanks for sharing. I think Absolutely. this, this kind of covers what we're talking about. Wait, today, I didn't so. ask you anything. I didn't hear about any of your dates well, and you, all of that stuff. I'm an open book. Maybe that's for next episode. Yeah. No, yeah. no I don't know if we have a whole lot of stories like yours and everything. I mean, we'd have to think about some of them. But, uh, yeah, it's an adventure. I just think the purpose for us, we just try to maintain that a date night for us, whatever that looks like, if it's just a walk, if it's a night out or whatever, that this gets put away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because because Shannon and I notice when we go to a, like a restaurant or whatever that a lot of times, um, especially young couples, it's the weirdest thing. You would think it would be the opposite. Young couples are sitting there waiting for food to arrive, and they've both got a phone in front of their face. And they're not talking. They're not engaging yeah. at all. And it's... Like, they have nothing to talk about. So yeah. it's like they don't even need kids to pull them away, like you said early on. That's right. The bases, it's the phones and it's the distractions. And I love having a, a mm -hmm. cell phone and a smartphone. I've seen that couples stuff. that are older, mm -hmm. didn't have a cell phone. Yeah. But they sat there the whole time and never, never said, said a word. word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, you know, couldn't you think of something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't yeah. you talk about yeah. the weather or yes. can't you talk about something? Yes, yes. It's yes. sad. Yeah. I don't want to be that couple. That's why we do those guides, because we give couples question, to, you know, question starters and everything. But, you know, it's funny. I get emails sometimes of people that almost confess. They're like, well, we took the guide and we went on a date and it was great. Thank you and everything. But we didn't do all the questions. Mm -hmm. Like, we got off on some tangents. Like, they're apologizing. And yeah. I'm going, do you not understand? That's the point, all right? Like, it's not our job to That's script right. your conversation. We just wanted to crack the door and to help you re-engage with each other and then where that goes from there. That's God's gift to you. Yep. All right? That's the way you do it. That's what we do. So date. That's great. Don't stop dating. I mean, don't stop dating other don't Stop dating other <laughs> yeah, people, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the caveat. <laughs> but, uh, but couples, you need to be dating, and we want to help you do that. So join us on November 3rd. Hey, is there anything coming up this weekend that you're excited about that uh, you want to yeah. say in closing? Yeah, I am because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, last weekend we had communion together. Mm -hmm. And, man, what a special time for the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. I don't think mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a more intimate setting than to be able to be together mm -hmm. and to remember how we got there. And that was his body, which was broken for us, his blood, which was shed. And, and, and right after that, he goes and he sends them out in a boat, hmm. and they get into some headwind. In fact, the scripture says that it was, it was the kind of headwind that was torturous. They, they, it was so hard to make any advance. And he comes by them walking on the water. And Jeff, I just think the marriage issue, I want to say this, you'll always have headwind. Hmm. You just got to learn to paddle together, hmm. and you got to learn who's with you. Hmm. And, and there's always going to be headwind. Yeah. But man, when, you, when we look at this story this weekend, uh, there's a moment in that, in that story and that where Peter says, if that's you, Lord, tell me to come to you. And 
the Lord says, come to me. And Peter does what he had no business doing. He tried to walk on water. <laughs> and you know what? He did, <laughs> at least for a little while. So I just want to encourage you, if you have opportunity to be here this weekend, to be here. Um, it's going to be a, a great weekend. Mm -hmm. If you can't, you can always stream it and uh, join us that way. But I hope you'll be able to be sitting right out there. Who knows? God may just say something and speak to a part of your life or an area, even your marriage. Because you know what? I know a lot of couples that have given up. They said, our marriage can't be any different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I didn't believe God could change your marriage, I'd quit today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd quit what I do today. Mm. I'd walk away. I believe words. he can change yeah. any marriage. He Absolutely. can change any life. Absolutely. So as a church, we are committed to your marriage and to help you see the truth that God has for your marriage as well. And so if you're out there, especially the ones that are listening that have never reached out before and don't think they can or they're ashamed for whatever reason, like I think the weakest person is the one that doesn't reach out. The strong one is the one that does. So right. let's destroy those stereotypes of, Counseling is for the week or whatever. You know, that's a, that's a myth and that's a lie. So reach out to us. And that's we right. want to help you and we want to see you this weekend. And so we look forward to that. Um, Pastor, thanks for being here. Thanks Absolutely. for uh, Jeff, thank you, man. Glad to. Glad to. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live.